Hi everybody, Jeff Esposito here from jeffesposito.com uh, to continue along with our book review series. Today we're going to talk about um, Al Rice and Laura Rice's The Fall of Advertising and the Rise of PR. Um, now to start off, this book uh, was one that I picked up off of a blog's Books I'm Going to Live 2010 by. Now a lot of the books on the list I'd already read, um, you know, including like Trust Agents, Get Seen, and then Gary Vaynerchuk's Crush It. So, you know, I'd read those books already and then like number four one on the list, I hadn't heard about it. Um, and it's kind of old. It's back from 2002, and a lot of a lot of you might have read this back in um, communications classes in college, or if you're marketing and some of your advertising classes. Um, you know, the book itself is interesting, albeit that it's written in 2002. I'm not going to hold the fact that some of the the case studies are a little bit outdated in there, because some of the the things they're talking about with brands coming of age and also collapsing, and how they don't embrace, they try to spend more money with advertisement rather than PR to build a buzz around the com around the company and how they're going to fall. So it kind of was predictive about a bunch of companies in there that, that fell, some of which were, were dot-com companies that are no longer around. And perhaps the funniest part about the book itself is that you know, the cover shows the pets.com, probably one of the coolest um, advertising things. I remember laughing about that when the dot-com boom was going on and thinking it was the coolest thing because back then I was, eh, I forget now, I can't do math younger. that well. But, but yes, I'm younger. My wife lets me know that I was, I was much younger, probably much better looking as well. Um, but the book itself, it actually brings me back to those days because the book actually is used. And the last time I bought a used book, it was back in college. So looking through the book, you know, outside of the great case studies, you're gonna, I've got a lot of great nuggets both highlighted, underlined, underlined twice, and extra, extra red underlining. So I guess some of these quotes were pretty important that I should have checked out in the book. Um, you know, one of the things, too, that gets me about the book is I wish college kids would take better care of their books. Um, just a pet peeve for being an English major. But let's start out with some of the quotes that I found, some of the nuggets I found out really good in there. So this one's in the introduction chapter. It's called, Publicity First, Advertising Second. Advertising doesn't build brands. Publicity does. Advertising can only maintain brands that have been created by publicity. You know, that's probably rel really relevant looking at it because, you know, if you think about it, the bigger brands in the world mostly came out of buzz that was formed. So think of when Dell started out. A lot of the buzz was about how they gave the computers out and the tech world saw them on there. You know, Apple, the same thing. You know, granted, they do a lot of advertising, but think about it right now when the iPad came out. How many stories, both positive and negative, came out and all it was was about Steve Jobs sitting out there and talking about it at their convention. These are people out there and they're looking at it and it wants to be the new and fresh thing. So I guarantee you its sales are probably going to do better um, because it's got a horrible name for marketing. But because it's a new, cool, hip thing that was featured on every site from Mashable down to um, individual tech blogs, that it's something on there. So let's continue on the nugget wagon. This is one that I'm talking about that's, all right, so if you can see it here, I'm probably not, but I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. There's a whole lot of, you know, yellow, red, blue on it. So we're going to get into this one here. Advertising is not what it worth. Oh, let's stop that now. So advertising is not worth what it costs, with one exception, and that's a big exception. When advertising serves a functional purpose, then advertising has a real value. But what is the functional purpose? Funny you should ask, because they highlight the next sentence too. The purpose of advertising is not to build a brand, but to defend the brand once the brand has been built by other means, primarily public relations and third-party endorsements. Um, you know, that's something that, that I believe strongly, and I think the PR has a, a strong tie to, to brands, but one of the things about it is that when you're within a company, a lot of the things that people want to look at is how much money can I throw at something to make it successful? And as... You know, many of you flax out there know you just can't, the more mud you throw at the wall, a lot of it's going to stick, but you can't continue to throw money at something and say, okay, how much money can I spend to get a public, public relations or, um, you know, buzz boost? It doesn't happen. You have to have the product and you have to have third parties going to, for it because if you're just sitting out there and putting something out, there's nowhere to back it up. Um, you know, that's kind of the credibility factor that comes in with PR. Um, so here's the, the last, can, the last um, quote that I want to talk to about in this book and, you know, like I said, there's a lot of highlighting, but a lot of it ended midway through the book after the advertisement stuff was kind of talked. So I think this student was an advertisement student that had this, and this quote's going to kind of prove it. So here's a, here's a question on there. How do you measure the value of a candle? That is an odd question, and I wonder if they work for um, the Yankee Candle Company right now, because that would be a good question to ask. You know, through on there, it says, unlike an electric light bulb, the value of a candle has no relationship to its light output. Like the fireplace and the sailing ship, the candle has lost its function and turned into art. Um, so right there, it kind of goes that where the brand has built something and now you, advertising has to boost it up. So once the publicity is gone, because I'm not sure how much you could really talk about candles now, I know that there's probably some PR folks out there that are on accounts where they can, they can talk a mile a minute about the benefits of candles and how great they smell, relaxation, other things like that. 
but it's kind of interesting to where it shows you know traditional campaign to where you know let's let's go back to, to Apple for a second and use the goodwill they've built up through I think through publicity. You know, once those those stories kind of there kind of run out and they're the walls kind of dry, then they could use advertisement to kind of supplement the brand that's been built up through public relations. Um, you know, and that's kind of the recurring theme through this book. So if you haven't read it, I'd say to check it out. It's kind of an interesting read. Get aside the fact that it's seven years now, um, outdated a little bit because a lot of the case studies are older, but they do still they still are relevant if you think about it back to where you're working or a client of yours. Um, definitely worth checking out. And you know, one of the biggest things they're talking about in here is one of the probably the, the biggest fights between advertising and PR within companies is that it's the money issue. How much money can we throw to see results? Um, and you know, a lot of people say let's we won't launch a new brand, but do a line extension because of the fact that it costs too much money to, to launch a new brand. Um, the book goes across a lot of areas that failed by doing a line extension instead of starting a new brand. For example, Xerox and AT and T, who both started laptops. Uh, I remember them when they started up, but we really don't hear about them too much now. Um, Another thing is Coke and New Coke. That was a failed experiment too, and it, was, it wasn't going after something new. So, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, this is a useful book, and it's more for a reflecting purpose than reading it for relevant case studies, because you kind of have to put one and one together. I did it through my current job as well, looking at kind of things that I did and did some reflecting on it. So, again, this is Jeff Esposito here from Jeff Esposito signing off and saying, that's my video book review of the fall of advertising and the rise of PR. Have a great night.